Welcome back to Revealing the Truth. I'm the Reverend Rabbi Eric Walker, your host. We're talking about hope. We're talking about grace. We're talking about God's mercy. We're talking about how God worked in Amy Lynn's life as she is the author of Behind the Mask, A Testimony of Hope. This book can be found on our website at inbn.com or ignitingnation.com. Click on Books and Media and just click on this book. It'll take you right to Amazon and it can be in your home. If you're a Prime user, it can be in your home even two days from now. And you will take a journey with Amy Lynn. She's called it Behind the Mask because as she went through her abortion, she found that she hid behind a mask of shame and guilt to keep the world out, but to keep her separated from God's love as well. Our shame, our sin, we seem to hide so well, we cover it up in our answer to how are we doing? We're doing great, we're blessed and highly favored, we're all is well with my soul when truly each one of us has a certain amount of tribulation in our life. There are periods of time when things are great and there are periods of times when things are not, but to hide and to believe we're hiding from the Lord, mm -hmm. to believe we're hiding from the people surrounding us, keeping a secret keeps us from an intimacy, a personal relationship with God that is so much greater, so much more than we could ever imagine. Amy, do you find that now that you have gone through abortion recovery, you have gone through being a director at Save a Life and serving there in a uh, both a paid and volunteer capacity, did you encounter others that wear a mask? Did you find that people rejected you because you were... Uh, someone who had had an abortion? No, absolutely not. Accepted, I was loved, oh yeah. So the people that you encounter, and especially the women uh, who have had an abortion, and you can personally relate to the mask that they wear, mm -hmm. what message do you have for them? What, speaking past the mask, speaking <clears throat> into the very depth of their heart as they're watching now this program live as they'll be watching on our rebroadcast yeah. what would you like to tell them i would like to tell you that there's hope and that there is healing that you don't have to be ashamed that god knows where you've been he's el roi he's the god who sees everything and you don't have to be alone. You don't have to be afraid. And I would like to let you know that um, any city that has a crisis pregnancy center usually also has an abortion recovery group. Please look that up and please contact a local crisis pregnancy center and go through an abortion recovery group because that is where your healing will take place. And there's so much you know, another thing, too, is grief. The, the, there's so much grief. God, God knows that you need to grieve this loss, but you don't realize that. And then as I went through the abortion recovery ministry, I, I saw that I had been holding on to my grief because that's all I had to hold on to. And as we had the memorial service and I brought my child to place into the coffin, that is when, and, and I had the opportunity to tell my child through that little doll that I was sorry. That's when I began seeing rays of sunshine peep through the dark clouds. You know, I, t I mentioned that that day I had the abortion where it's like a gray cloud. And that gray cloud hung with me. That was the day I gave the devil a foothold into my life. Mm -hmm. and, and he ran with it. And that's what happens when you open the door to sin, is you give the devil a foothold and he will do everything he can to keep you from the abundant life God has for you, the freedom that God has for you to live in this life. You know, we've bought into the lie <clears throat> that 
cancer or heart disease or diabetes is the number one killer in America, but the number one killer in America is abortion. Yeah. More lives are lost to abortion than any other condition. 3,000 a day. 3,000 a day. So it's staggering numbers. I know that there are a number of women who live in abject fear, have been married under the pretense that they've never been with child. Yeah. They refer to their firstborn in this marriage as their only child, their first child, and they continue to perpetuate this fabrication of the truth yes. by denying, even to themselves, yes. afraid to admit, afraid to confess, even to the person that they are become one with. Absolutely. Can someone truly be one with another and hold out this particular secret? I don't think so. And the women that I've had the opportunity to minister to who were married, they, they know that that's a wedge in their marriage relationship. And, you know, I've even had a, a man, a, a husband, come up to me and he said, thank you for making my wife nice. <laughs> and, and I said, there's no way your wife could ever been mean. He said, nope. He said, thank you for making her nice. And it's once you release all the years of hurt, you just find this freedom. And you, you it's, it's hard so we're, to So we're not talking here about justifying the act of abortion. No. We're not talking here about excusing a behavior that terminates a life. No. We're not talking about blowing it off. We're talking about going through the process of getting right with God right. over this decision. Yes. We're talking about having to address it head on, to confess your sin one to another, and He is faithful to forgive us our sin. That's right. This is not an easy thing to go through. No, it's not. It was very hard. It was very, it was very painful. You know, as a child passes through the birth canal and there's a lot of squeezing going on, it uh, releases certain endorphins within them so that they, it's not a painful experience. It actually releases uh, life-giving endorphins into them. We talk about being born again. Mm -hmm. uh, Rabbi Nicodemus goes to Jesus and said, how can I inherit the kingdom of heaven? He says, you must be born again. And he said, well, how can I go back into my mother's womb? Right. And he says, well, what's born of flesh is flesh, what's born of spirit is spirit. And so we look at this and you actually have to go through the pain of pregnancy, but it's now an emotional thing. Yes. And you truly have to deliver this baby. Yeah, yeah you do. And so this process that you go through through abortion recovery mm -hmm. is really a process of not terminating but completing yes, yes. the birth process. That is a beautiful way to put it. And so uh, I don't want people to think that this is a way out, if, that this is a, uh, a way to justify or excuse a behavior right. that certainly is uh, not sanctioned by God. Right. But it equipped you to be able to minister to others. It equipped you to, re to identify that you were wearing a mask yes. and that everyone who's hiding behind that secret ha has not really surrendered themselves fully to the Lord. No, I, I agree with that. So you, what encouragement do you have? You, you, you have... Um, Talk to us about reaching out to uh, abortion recovery, going through that kind of program. Mm -hmm. How important is it, because I've seen this with several that I know, that they felt compelled to get before a large group of people and share their story, that they felt that, that was what they needed to do? Because the more, the more you share your hurts, the more healing and cleansing God does in your life. And, you know, it's like you quoted James 5.16, you know, confess your sins to one another, pray for one another that you may be healed. And that is what God does. And when you, the more you talk about your hurts, the less of a foothold the devil has in your life. Because, you know, it's like with an alcoholic or, or you know, someone who's gone through a divorce or anything, any hurtful thing. Um, 
the more you talk about the problem that you're having or the more you talk about what you've gone through and what God's taken you through, you give glory to God and you help other people. You help, and you know, and I've seen it time and time again, God brings people into these groups that has so much to offer each other through the sharing and ministering through the groups. And it's not just what I have the opportunity to share, but it's what they share with each other. And it's amazing the healing that takes place. Well, as a matter of fact, we're gonna have on the program uh, at the end of the month, I think it's on the 30, Nope, it's on the uh, 20, mm, I'll have to look and tell you what the exact date is, uh, that we will be having uh, local ministries on with us, and one of those is the Executive Director of Save a Life, Shelby Great. County, uh, to talk more about this and more about the services offered. Uh, so now reality has sunk in, you've reconciled, you've had this, but you have another child. I do. Now you have to go to your child to confess to your child that you terminated the life of their sister. Yes. What kind of impact did that have on both you and her? Well, I told her when she was 10, because that's how old she was when I went on staff with Save a Life. Okay. And I wanted, I knew that I would be sharing my testimony, and I wanted her to hear my story from me and not someone else. And so we went to a local state park, and you know, we, we just, we just had it, we were, went for a walk, and, and we talked about it. We sat down at a picnic table, we, we talked about it, and I told her that she had a sister in heaven, and you know, I asked her, I said, what do you think about this? And she said, well, I'm kind of mad and I'm kind of sad. She said, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm mad that, you know, you did this. And she said, but I'm sad that I don't have a sister to play with and stuff. Does it ever come up again? How long ago was that? That was 20 years ago. 20 years ago. Yes. So she's now 30. Yes. Uh, did she ever face the temptation in her life where you sharing with her kind of kept her from making a mistake? Absolutely. Absolutely. And I'm so grateful <coughs> that I went through it and she didn't have to. So even in the family, it's yes. important that there be a transparency. Yes. Because it's one thing to go out to a total stranger at a high school or and, and share this and then walk away. But it's another thing in your own home if the life you save may be your own family members. That's right. So it's, it makes uh, a difference. It, it does make a difference. We're talking about Behind the Mask, a testimony of hope written by Amy Lynn. She is an overcomer by the word of her testimony and the blood of the Lamb. This is a story of hope, but it's also a story of transparency that all of us must come out from behind this mask that we wear and be real because we serve a real God. Yes, we do. And to be a reflection of his image, to allow for the light to shine through, we have to shed, <coughs> excuse me, each and everything that hampers that, everything that covers that up. Yes. You would not leave a lamp undusted. You dust your furniture because you can't see the beautiful luster of the if it's covered with a bunch of dirt. Exactly. And, you know, and I believe God wants us to have a cleansed heart. I, be I believe he wants us, you know, it, it's like you can't be the vessel that God wants you to be if you're full of a bunch of junk. Well, that's what King David said. He said, Lord, create a clean heart in me. Yes. And renew a right, right spirit. That's right. Create in me a clean heart. That's right. And renew a right spirit within me. Yes. So you found that through sharing that the mask was gone. Mm -hmm. Now you encounter people who you know are wearing a mask. Right. You, maybe it's not the mask of abortion. Maybe it's the mask of sin. Maybe God has allowed you to see some things in some other people. Does he do that because now he wants you to judge them or does he want you to intercede for them or does he want you to minister 
to them? Um, the interceding in the minister, not not judge. I, I, I try not to judge people because that's God's job. I, I love to pray. I love to pray for people. I love to help people. I love to, um, you know, I, I love to help people understand that it, one of the things that I do in my groups is I, I draw a, a, a cross, and um, at the top of the cross I put the word abu abuser over here and the word abuse over here, and then I have them list people who've hurt them in their lives, and then I have them list the hurts that these people have done. And then we look at Romans 3.23, all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God, and I say, you know, who are these people on the abuser side of the column? And according to Romans 3.23, and they say, well, they're sinners. And so, you know, I write a big sinner on there. And then what is, you know, what is this over here that they've done to you? And they said, it's sin. And so I write sin over there. I said, and who is the author of sin? And they said, well, the devil. I said, exactly. I said, the devil used these people to do these bad things to you to hurt you. So the, the one you need to be mad at is the devil. I said, yeah, these people, the devil used these people to hurt you, right. but you need to be mad at the devil. And so it changes the perspective of being mad at someone and, and, and pointing the finger and blaming someone, and, and the person that needs to be blamed is the devil. Well, it certainly doesn't absolve us of our responsibility that no. there is evil in the world. <clears throat> and that... The word says that uh, even if you are tempted, God will not allow you to be tempted beyond what you can handle. You can handle. Yeah. So what are you doing now with your career or? Well, right now I'm in mortgage banking. Mortgage banking. I, I've been in mortgage banking for 30 years. Um, I would probably still be in ministry, but I have, I'm not good at begging for money. <laughs> So I, I, I got out of ministry and went back into mortgage banking. and um, But the ministry work that I do is I've been leading freedom groups through my local church. And I'm planning to continue leading a, a life group. It's, you know, living in freedom every day um, at my church. And also doing a Women of the Word Bible study Sunday school class. And just, um, and, and I work with the GAs on Sunday, um, Wednesday night at church and I love working with the young girls and I love having the opportunity to share the abstinence. I don't have the opportunity to go into the schools anymore because of my job, but I love to share with young girls a message of purity and I, I'm single. I've been single for years and, and I, I abstain. I, I, I choose abstinence and, um, you know, and that's just the way I live my life. I, I want to be pure before God and that's that's just my life. Well, that's a wonderful story here, Behind the Mask, a testimony of hope. You actually have one chapter that uh, talks about uh, an abusive relationship. Yeah. Uh, sexual abuse, abandonment, verbal abuse, control. Mm -hmm. What... Uh, This is uh, ex-husband. You had already gone through abortion recovery at this time, and now you are feeling good. Your mask is off, and what happens? Well, I did a lot of ministry work. Uh, I've, I've always, I haven't dated a lot. I've always done a lot of ministry work. And that's been real important to me. And the church that I was involved with, we always we had a lot of different ministries stemming from the umbrella of the church. And so I would just, you know, help mm -hmm. different ministries in different areas. And um, that's what I love to do. I love to help people. And um, I ended up meeting someone at church. We had a whirlwind relationship. We started dating December 3rd, got engaged January 29th, and married on March 4th. Um, had our honeymoon phase for about nine months, and then he started drinking. And I knew that he had a drinking problem prior to that. And I, you know, I just feel like God can deliver you from anything. And I, I feel like God can do anything, but I forget about a person's free will. And so the drinking got worse and worse and worse. 
in the relationship to the point where um, he got really drunk one night and told me that he wanted to tie a cement block around my feet and throw me in the river. And that's when I knew... Words that every wife longs to hear. I know. And so that's when I knew that I needed to get out of that relationship. And so I had to... um, When he started drinking and started... The marriage started deteriorating, I had to lay down the ministry work that I was doing and let everything focus on um, staying alive and um, but I, I was I was crazy in love with the man mm-hmm. and so after the marriage was over I've been divorced now um, seven years uh, it took a long time to to get over that to for someone that I'm supposed to be able to trust right. and love um, it took a long time to recover and and so that's that's where I am now. I'm, I'm, I've been teaching the past three so, years. So the point I want to get to is is uh-huh. that you had to get to a point where you could forgive yourself for the decision that you made to have an abortion. Oh, yeah. Did you have to revisit that forgiveness? Did God take you back through in this broken marriage, back to a place where you were going to have to exercise the forgiveness that you had learned through... Yes. Your experience with abortion recovery. Absolutely. And, um, you know, I mentioned the forgiveness day earlier. And the forgiveness that, you know, we we experienced that day was what, you know, I've shared with others and what I had to go through. And and it just, it, it, it takes a while to get to that point where you can forgive somebody. It's not something you can just automatically do. We're talking with Amy Lynn. The book is Behind the Mask, A Testimony of Hope. It's her journey, her testimony of struggle and by God's grace, by God's supernatural total forgiveness. Now she'd experienced a 99% forgiveness, but now she had to pass through to the other side of forgiveness, and that is truly receiving it. This book is available online at ianbn.com, ignitinganation.com. Uh, go to Books and Media and click on Behind the Mask, A Testimony of Hope. If you're hiding behind a mask, hiding behind the mask of abortion, this is a book that you can read. Uh, it will not take you long to hear the journey of one who you can make the same choice she did, and that is seek help seek recovery, transparency, and real forgiveness. God does not remind you of your past. God reminds you of your future. Yes. It is only the enemy that speaks into you about yesterday. Mm-hmm. It's God that speaks to you about tomorrow. Get this book. It will help you through your struggle to get out from behind your own mask. When we return, We will be with Nita Bellis from In Our Backyard, a ministry for advocacy for human sex trafficking as we're uh, doing a follow-up story in this month of January, Human Sex Trafficking or Human Trafficking Awareness Month. So we'll be back with you in just a few minutes.